everybody, I'm Larry Reed Sports. Anticipation is mounting for today's game, and we've got two quarterbacks looking to make an impact. It's the Cowboys going up against the Broncos. So let's get you out to Denver for the call of our game. Here are Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, we are a couple miles west of the Colorado State Capitol building as we come to you from Sports Authority Field at Mile High here in downtown Denver. Coming up, we've got a good matchup on tap between the Dallas Cowboys and the Denver Broncos. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. One man in the backfield, Elliott. He'll get the football here. He takes this for three to the 29. Bradley Roby, the quarterback, there to make the stop. Here's the offense, and I don't know what more you can say at this point in his career about Jason Witt. You just give him full respect. This is a guy who knows how to do everything on the football field, not just catch the run game with his blocking at the line of scrimmage. Prescott now. He finds his target, Terrence Williams. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. And on this first drive, looks like they want to get that vertical passing game going early. And they did, and what a warning shot they just fired. If you're not going to back up and play coverage deep, we're going to attack you all game long. And once you adjust to that and you start to back off, then that opens things up underneath. A really nice start for them. Great way to get the game going. Prescott looks to throw on first. Pass the 20. Man open left side. It's Williams. A really good pickup of 28 yards. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. Here we go. From the red zone now, Prescott. That's complete right around the eight. And he is into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Terrence Williams, a 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Cowboys take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. And this is up and good to make it 7-0 Cowboys. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This will be taken in at the one. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. On first down, it's Simeon. Over the middle, it's Thomas. A gain of six there on first. Well, the bad news, the Denver Broncos didn't make the playoffs, but the good news for Demarius Thomas, he was over 1,000 yards again as a receiver. Six straight year he's done that, but yards per catch and touchdowns down a little bit. Any of that due to the change at quarterback? Think about it. For him now, in the last two seasons, he's had to get used to three, well, really four different quarterbacks throwing him the football. I think that yards per catch will go back up when he gets some consistency. And when this offense is clicking on all cylinders, the running back is in sync as well. The focal point. Runs, catches, blocks, sets the tone for the offense. First carry for Devontae Booker. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. down. Here's the run with Anderson. And he is going to lose yardage here. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. And the offense there, the O-line, everybody really on offense, they were just manhandled at the point of attack. Yeah, you could pretty much call them all out, couldn't you? <laughs> Almost by name, right? That was a very tough sequence for the offensive line. But how about that defensive front creating a new line of scrimmage and creating a... Take it right down Broadway! 20! And he's going to be marked down deep in Dallas territory. It's a big play there for the Broncos. 48 yards. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. All right, here we go. 
Now Thomas will come in motion right. And some changes here as the D-line separates some. Toss play. This is Anderson. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And now the defense for Dallas. Freddie Gregory entered the league with people excited about his pass rushing skills. They continue to stay excited about his potential. On second down, Anderson looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. When I watch plays like that, I give a lot of thanks that my DNA did not make me an offensive tackle because that is a very difficult job to hold your block against a really good defensive end and hang on to it so your runner can get to the edge and do it without holding. I don't know that that's really possible for very many people. In motion left goes Sanders. carry for Justin Forsan. And here he'll get it down to the seven. It's a gain of five, but it'll lead to a fourth down. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an running game. That'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. And they're going to at least Detroit, line up Detroit. to go for it here on fourth down. Switch, switch. On fourth down, Simeon. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off, Byron Jones. And he will bring it out past the 20-yard line. And now here come the Cowboys. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. Partner, I know you call the play-by-play, play, but you know your ball. If I throw these numbers at you, all right, six yards shy of 2,000 of total yards from scrimmage for a rookie running back. What do you think? Sounds like me in high school. <laughs> Sounds yeah. like you doing it, no, right? it's, it's really fascinating in what he was able to do. The thing for me, though, he did that as a rookie. Where do you go from here? I mean, can you keep going up from those numbers, your sophomore campaign? I think that you can. He's had examples of that it, it, preceding him in the NFL. Some guys who are in the Hall of Fame right now. Remember, he had 16 total touchdowns because it's not just his ability to run it. He can catch it out of the backfield as well. No one plays harder than this guy does down in and down out. I think he's just going to keep getting better. A first down carry by Elliott. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. A couple of Broncos there in on the tackle. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Complete to Jason Witten. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. A good pick up there, 26 yards. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. Drops it underneath, Elliott. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Ezekiel Elliott, 31 yards. And the Cowboys will extend their lead. Getting your back involved, what's the importance there in the passing game? Well, oftentimes you can create mismatches because who's going to cover him? And you get him into space, which is where he likes to operate with the ball in his hands. Oftentimes makes people miss, gets that run after the catch, and off he goes. And into the end zone. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. And Denver getting set to take the field. Looked like they had something going last drive. Then the interception happened. 
Will they recover? The memory they need to keep with them is that they did have something going. They were moving the ball on offense, had a nice sequence going. Don't worry about the other part. You can't get that back. Let's go back to what you were doing well before. I thought you were going to say they need to have no memory, but remember the good part, forget the bad. I like that even better. way forward for a couple up past the 30. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature and make sure you don't get hurt. Just a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll mean a call to the punt team as it's fourth down. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no gain. To throw with Shemian. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right? To be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. One receiver left, three to the right. Throwing, Prescott. He's got the connection to Cole Beasley. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Des Bryant, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Let's give some credit to the defensive guys on that play. Able to bat that one away. Sure looked like they were trying to hit the corner route. They play fake to Elliott. Now Prescott. And that is caught. Touchdown, Cowboys. Terrence Williams with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Cowboys will add on to their lead. And it is now 21 to nothing. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. So the Broncos coming out now. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. They'll bring a tight end in motion left. So with that, we come upon the two-minute warning here on the NFL on EA Sports. Shift together here from the D-line. In the backfield is Anderson. He's going to get the football. C.J. Anderson, the 30. 10, and all the way home for a Bronco score. C.J. Anderson, 65 yards, and the Broncos get a bit closer. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take it up past the 25, 
to the 26-yard line. And out now come the Cowboys. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you think to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's, Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. I love it. Let's see if they dial it up this drive. Forced out to his left. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. All right, different topic here. 2018, the Super Bowl traveling north, far north to Minneapolis. Early, early, early predictions for that one. Who you got? Well, you know, everyone's still waiting in the NFL for a home team to play in its yeah. home stadium, right? So could the Vikings be that team? I'll start in the NFC, and I'm going to say no. I think Seattle, starting to get near that, maybe last run with their defense. Burrow Thomas returns. I like Seattle coming out of the NFC. How about you? Well, I'm actually going to take a Dallas Cowboys oh, yeah. NFC title run. I think that they came so close this year, probably most talented going into next year. I like that one. Well, in the AFC, I'm going to go with a team that if they improve their defense and their quarterback stays healthy, they could be that team, the Oakland Raiders. Okay, I'm going dark horse. Cleveland Browns, I like let's it. go. Hey, from worst to, to first. first. The three straight incompletions, they don't care. That hasn't dissuaded them. They're going to go for it on fourth. On fourth, they do snap it to Prescott. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the free safety, Darian Stewart. And he'll get this one out to the 50 to the midfield strike. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And they're going to need another score. Got one last time, but still down here. When you're playing catch-up, every possession becomes crucial, doesn't it? It's vital. Get back out on the field, punch it in the end zone again. They know it's not easy, but what they do have going for them, they did score the last time. They think they've got a good formula working. And what about the defense? Well, now you're just saying to yourself, okay, we give up a score last time. What adjustments do we need to make to slow them down now and get the ball back for our own offense? Is it more pressure? Is it more zone? What do they have to do? They're trying to figure that out themselves. We'll see if they can figure that out right here. The defensive line disperses a little bit here, maybe expecting a pass. And he'll get this down to about the 30, 31-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the... Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And the defense searches for one more stop here after the run on second down. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Third and two, Simeon. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked off by Barry Church. So that is three interceptions now in this first half. And you hate to ask the question, but you know, let's be honest. We're thinking about it. Do you need to go in a different direction next year? Potentially. We know that he's probably not going to be on the Pro Bowl ballot. That's not really his stature here. But he has been their starting quarterback for this game. So they've got to weigh things about who's behind him. Do they think he can snap it back? Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. A glance back at 2016 for Des Bryant. 50 receptions under 800 yards, had eight touchdowns. What do you make of the season that Dez had? Well, remember, it started with Dez injured, so it took a little while for him to get started. I'm going to make a bold prediction for you. Would not shock me at all if he doubled his catch number next year and darn near doubled his receiving yardage total. Because if he's healthy all year long, they're going to want to take some pressure off of the run game themselves, and Dak Prescott in his second season should be that much more confident throwing it downfield. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. This just a 24-yard attempt. <laughs> and he 
that he'll try and throw here on the fake. This will be caught at about the five. That's it for the first half. Two more quarters to go. We'll have plenty more to see after the break. Welcome back. Charles and I settled into the booth ready for quarter number three. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is taken at the three. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. Here comes the Broncos' offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it's going to make it third down at six. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. The emotion right is Thomas. Third down, Bunker uses the stiff arm. It goes as a gain of six, and it's a first down. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. In the backfield is Anderson. Green, the tight end, in motion. First down, Simeon. And it's caught over the middle by the tight end, Green. Give him nine there on the first down completion. See a map play and understand just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays. Makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. Green, the tight end, in motion. They'll run it. Here's Anderson. Uses the stiff arm. And it was a stiff arm there that freed him enough to get the first before he's tackled. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Man, these guys may not win this ball game, but you certainly can't fault the effort of this man here today. He's been a real thorn in their sides all afternoon. And that last carry puts him over the 100-yard mark. They run again on first down. Anderson. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. It's a loss of eight there on the first down play. Well, that wasn't just a loss. That was a loss of big yardage there. So the sense you're starting to get is that offensively, things are starting to pile up against them. And they've got to find a way to stop that. Conversely, how about the great call by the defensive coordinator? He realized that he's got him on the run a little bit. That call was made to get upfield penetration by his defensive front to try and get into the gaps, get upfield into the ball. And it's picked up by the Cowboys, and they will set up shop in enemy territory at the 42-yard line. The Cowboys offense now, they head out for their first possession of the second half. Prescott now after the fumble recovery. He's going to rifle one deep left side. And Dez has got it. Dez Bryant for the Cowboy touchdown. Dez Bryant, 42 yards. And the Cowboys capitalize on the fumble and turn it into six. They'll look to throw. And they don't get it. They tried for the two-point conversion there, but unsuccessful. Protection was great. He had time to set up a campsite. But in the secondary, though, they were ready. And I think that in most places on the field, if you have that much time to throw the ball, someone's going to shake free and you'll find an open receiver. But condensed near... two-point
point conversion, all that extra, you know, there's not any extra field. So it kind of closes in on them, and that allows you to cover a little bit better. The first throw for the backup Lynch. Green's got it over the middle. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Possible run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. And they're going to speed things up here. Lynch looking to throw on second. A hit as he throws there incomplete. Virgil Green is tied in the intended receiver. And it's third and short. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. And able to find Green. They give him five yards there, and it's enough for the first. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be? And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Jalen Smith in from his linebacker spot. He's able to drop him for a loss of about 10. On second down, Forsett. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Give him four yards there, but still in a big hole. Third and long. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game. And I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. Now Paxton Lynch on third and long. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. So much of this game is focus and concentration. And whenever I see guys running the in route, I know that in the back of their mind, they're always wondering who's lurking inside that might put a big hit on them as they try and catch the ball. And they'll indeed go for it with Lynch. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Orlando Skandrick. And a return across midfield into the 46-yard line. And now following that play, we've got a man down defensively, one of the members of the secondary. And we'll just hope he's all right to continue. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Following the interception, here's Prescott. He's going to wind up and air it out. And it's caught at the 10. And he is into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Terrence Williams, 46 yards. And the Cowboys turn that interception into a touchdown. Oh, it's a fake. They'll try and throw for it. Partner, that type of a lead, and they're going to fake it from the 15 to try and pick up a two-point play instead of kicking it through the post. Come on, man. Put that in mothballs. Come on. Well, come on. Don't do that. Put that in mothballs. Yeah, huh? preserve that for it. That's, a, uh, that's an ancient just... relic, faking it. You, you, I can understand you. You want to rub it in a little. You fake it when you snapped it from the three. But from the 15, mothball that bad boy, just like my grandmother had. Yeah, in my, her attic, the my stuff she used to preserve. My grandmother's the same. It's kind <laughs> They start the drive with Anderson. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And quickly, they get to the line. But it was stopped on that play. We've had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one. Try to get it to Thomas, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Morris Claiborne. And he takes this one back into the end zone, and the Cowboy defense has a touchdown. Well, we know this defense has athleticism. Spots like that prove us right. I love the way that you spotlighted the athleticism because you and I both know the best athletes on the field, they play on defense. Oh, I don't know. I was a kicker. you got to remember that now. Come on. Come on. Fine. Try to run it in with Elliott. And he will not make it to the goal line as his try for two is going to come up empty. But that's little consolation to this defense as they have been porous all game long. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This is taken at the three. 
And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Broncos offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. Hey, give me a second. I got to piss, bro. All right, let's go. In the backfield is Anderson, and they'll give it to him here. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it's a first down for the Broncos. Welcome back now to Denver. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. They'll throw on first down with Lynch. And he's got his man on the out route. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play, but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. On first and ten, it's Lynch. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. A great read, and it's picked off. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. admit partner that I've often thought that I don't like this rule where the offensive player fumbles the ball it goes out of bounds and they get to keep it <laughs> that's just because you're a defensive guy that's why you don't like it yeah you're right it is a slanted view isn't it but that's this is where for the offensive team the sideline is their friend usually it's not their friend yeah exactly right I actually played for a guy in college you know what he used to name the sideline Sammy. Sammy sideline and use him well. He was trying to get it to Ezekiel Elliott, and that'll bring up second down. As a general rule, when you take a deep shot downfield, it's usually a timing pattern. Quarterback in the pocket and looking to hit his receiver downfield, but when he has to move outside of it, timing off and gets thrown off, and on that play, that caused the incompletion. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. They'll get nothing out of that one, and it's going to lead to a third down. 
usually the offense has an answer to anything a defense throws at them, including a safety valve. And that's what they did on that play. They went there, but the defense still made an excellent play and held them to no game. He was looking for Terrence Williams that time, and it's fourth down. Putting pressure on the guy throwing the football is always good, but when you can couple that with contact on him that leads to an incompletion, as we just saw there, that's winning football. And look at this, it's a fake. And yeah, a quick throw here, that's complete. But he will not make the first down marker, and that'll be a turnover on downs. And Denver getting set to take the field. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. But they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. From midfield now, here's Lynn. Well, an incomplete pass certainly doesn't look like a good play. <laughs> For the guy throwing it today, as many interceptions he's thrown, he's got to feel a sigh of relief that the ball actually hit the ground and didn't go in the other direction. Green, the tight end, in motion. Third down now, it's C.J. Anderson. And some room to work. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. A gain of seven, and they pick up the first. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, and he got there. They run it again with Anderson. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Another tote here for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Anderson, and he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. 12 yards is the pickup there, and that'll bring up what looks to be a third of inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Here's Anderson. And he's brought down, but not before picking up the first with a very effective stiff arm. It's a pick. And now a timeout called by the Cowboys defense. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. This is fourth set. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. That's going to go as a loss of seven, and it'll set him back for second down. Well, anytime it's a toss or a pitch play, it's a battle for the edges. Who's going to control the edge of the line of scrimmage? In other words, can the defensive guys hold their leverage? What we were always taught was keep your outside arm or outside shoulder free. If you were playing on the play side, meaning the ball coming towards you, and anyone coming from the backside, they're pinching down and sliding Let's down go. towards it to try and keep people kind of locked into one spot. And boy, what a great defensive play there. Run out leverage, running to the football from the inside out, turned into a big loss of yardage. Time for a break. Back to finish it off on EA Sports after this. They come out with one back and three tight ends. They'll try. And he's across for the touchdown. Too little, too late. But he does get in for six. No wonder you're grinning. You just beat me in our fantasy league. Indeed I did, my good man. Instead of having to play follow the leader there, the leader led. I like that. And he likes that, doesn't he? First and goal, let me do the job. Because you know when he falls into the end zone after falling behind those big, big guys who pushed up front, that's a pretty good celebration, isn't it? Gives him a little street cred in the locker room, too, doesn't it? Street cred, and then when they go out to dinner afterwards, he's still picking up the check. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. They come into enemy territory, and I don't care what the matchup is in the National Football League. You're up like this late in the game on the road. This feels pretty good. Oh, it feels fantastic. Anytime you get a road victory in the NFL, that's a big-time accomplishment. And to do it this convincingly, that just tears up the script that every home team has, which is nobody comes into our house and pushes us around. They took care of business today. Yeah, they pushed around, and now the final stages of this one. 
Throwing here. Prescott. Going for the deep ball. And that's caught inside the 35. And all the way down to the 26. A big play here for Dallas. 52 yards. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. First down, Prescott. His throw caught at about the five. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Des Bryant, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Cowboys add on. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And boy, talk about adding insult to injury. He's into the end zone to tack on two more. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. And coming out now, the Broncos. They are just obviously getting shellacked here in this one, Charles. What's, what's the message if you're a coach for this final drive in a lopsided game like this? For a lot of coaches, be honest. Don't forget today. Don't forget what has happened out here. Yeah, use that as ammo exactly. going forward. Exactly. Take a great look at that scoreboard. Realize how poorly everything went for us today. Coaching, playing, the whole deal. And never forget it because you're not going to want that feeling. No, you don't want that feeling again. And who knows? You may meet up with this team again. Shedding the tackle and it gives him some room. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. And now they're in the hurry up. On first down, it's Lynch. And he'll be wrapped up around the waist and pushed down. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. Green, the tight end, in motion. Lynch to throw. He's going to let it fly. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by Barry Church. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The Cowboys offense heading back out and ready to go again. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. And it's always the final play of preparation each week. The practicing of the kneel down formation, the victory formation. We've got a game in hand, and that's all they're going to want to do now. They'll put someone back deep just in case something goes haywire. But all in all, take the snap, kneel down, and, and shake hands. Yes, get out of there. And it's incomplete. Still time left, though. Two seconds remaining now in the fourth quarter. It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there, and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. Prescott looking deep downfield. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Akeem Tlaib. 